The footage in this video is transformative and is protected under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 for purposes of criticism, comments or news reporting. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Got an interesting one for you. Now, if anyone doesn't know, I was interviewed and followed around by a camera crew from Australia recently. Now, this is the largest, I think this is the most, I think, yeah, this is the largest primetime news channel in Australia, Channel 7's Sunday Night. Now, very interesting. All right, so the journalist's name is uh, Denim Hitchcock. This guy, like, just look at his Instagram. There's like three or four, five pictures of him eating big steaks. It was love at first sight. He's looking at a big bit of flesh there. Here he is uh, with some ham for Christmas. And there's another one of him, you know, staring at a big hunk of animal body. So, of course, with, with old Denham... Um, oh, Denham Hitchcock uh, reporting. It's not going to be biased at all, is it? It's, it's definitely not going to be biased. Let's have a watch of this together and see how biased it is, hey? Just judging by the trailer alone, it's definitely going to be biased. Now, let's just see how they report on this. Is it going to be fair? Is it going to be, you know, a, a really balanced report? Let's see. I haven't seen this, by the way. This is the first time for me to watch this. So I thought I'd watch it, react... If I have any points to make, I'll make them along the way. I'm sure I'll have some points to make. A dairy farmer catches a vegan activist filming animals on his property. Got a shotgun, is it? He's got a shotgun, he's firing shots, but vegans are the extremists. Interesting. And here, only this week, a farmer in Queensland. Get off my country! Get off my country? Does that even make sense? Powerless has close to 150 vegan activists stormed his property. Powerless. Like, see how they see how they frame it? Like, he was so powerless as 100 vegan activists stormed his property. Oh, the poor farmer, like, oh no, what are they, what, what, what are they gonna find there? Did they show what the, what the activists actually found there? There's the truth, what you're hiding. You're only reason you're upset because you've got something to hide. There are dead cows. <laughs> They were shot. They were shot. Yeah. So how do you humanely yeah. shoot a cow? Those four cows that have been shot in the head, you know, just horrific. Like what that farmer was doing to animals on his farm. I wonder if they report on that. Or just is it just about the activists going onto his farm, not the fact that there were four animals shot in the head? This is exactly where they've come through. Two barbed wire fences. This is an invasion. They have weapons for a start. Dude, listen to the music, mate. This just sounds like a horror movie. Did they have weapons? Of course they don't have weapons. Look, they don't have weapons. You had a gun. <laughs> you were shooting cows in the head. You know, have they got a stick in their hand? Well, obviously they didn't have a stick in their hand, you know, because you were there and you saw them. They didn't have a stick in their hand, did they? God. Have they got a gun? They got a gun? Are you serious? Obviously no one had a gun there. I mean, come on. No one had a gun. You were there. I was fearing for my life. I find that very hard to believe that he was fearing for his life. It was probably 80% uh, women there that, you know, which they, were, they weren't bothered with you. They weren't bothered with you. They were going straight for the farm. They were going straight for the animals. Calling us killers, murderers. They called you killers because you were literally killing animals. Every name there that they could be calling us, they called us. Well, where are the animals that were shot in the head? Where were the an Why aren't they showing the animals that were shot in the head? This is this is completely ludicrous. All they're focusing on is how evil the activists are with this crazy as horror style music. Where are the animals that were shot in the head? Around the world, hardline animal rights activists have declared war. A war on the system, not on the individual human beings that are indoctrinated into that system. The only war that's been waged is the war that's been waged on animals. I see it as a form of terrorism, uh, to be perfectly honest. I see it as a form of terrorism, to be perfectly honest. When you lower pigs down into gas chambers, shoot cows in the head, take children away from mothers, put them in slaughterhouses, uh, you know, slash chickens' throats open. I see that as terrorism. Leading the charge on both sides. When people ask me what I do, I actually just tell them that I'm a professional carnivore. 
A professional carnivore? I'm gonna be holding myself back being nice here, really. A professional carnivore. Is that your profession? Listen, fellow, this is a four-quarter of a cow. His head would have been up here, but he's got more important and delicious things to become. How sick. That was the body, body of an animal. That lady just objectifying that animal like that, like, really a professional animal objectifier. The thing is, I really need to lay my cards on the table here because I am and have long been a red meat loving carnivore. You're not a carnivore, dude. You're a human herbivore imposter. Just been completely brainwashed to think he's a lion. <laughs> Under attack. People like me are under attack. You such a oh my god! Oh, beef ribs, thank you, man. And they want us to put this and our steak knives down for good. I want you to act with a basic level of morality. You know, not stabbing animals in the throat. How about that? How about trying that? He's appealing to the outrage of like your average meat eater. We're under attack. You know, like he wants us to put our steak knives down for good. He's trying to attack us and our burgers. A room full of militant vegans loudly accusing you of murder. True statement. It isn't food. It is violence, actually. To a meat-eating outsider, everything about going vegan seems extreme. You know, I, I've been on both sides of the fence. I used to eat meat. Everything about eating animals is extreme. Extremely violent, extremely cruel, extremely unnecessary, extremely bad for the environment. <laughs> You can't have woolen clothing because wool is from sheep. That's such a simplified version of it. We're against the exploitation and harm of sheep. It's not in the, sh the sheep's best interest to be bred into existence just to be used for their wool and then shot in the head and have their throats slashed open and turn into lamb chops just for a sweater. At the heart of it all is a philosophy that humans shouldn't impose their will on any animal, great or small. That was probably the most logical thing you've said this whole time. An Australian who has become the face and the voice of the extreme vegan movement. The extreme vegan movement. How extreme is it to be against animal cruelty? Well, in a world where animal cruelty is normalised, it is considered extreme. Think about that. Think about society and where society is at, that it's extreme to be against animal cruelty. You have a, a long criminal history. Here we go. It can't really be a documentary on vegan activism without talking about, you know, the past and the character of vegan activists. Can people trust a man with a criminal history like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to live in a world where someone can't do wrong and then redeem themselves for it. Yeah, I did some stuff wrong in my past. I was on drugs, I was around the wrong people, I got brought up in a bad environment, you know? I was a lost youth, you know? Big deal, I'm not shooting animals in the head now, am I? I'm trying to do better. Can't we all just do better? Since then, he has become the unofficial attack dog. The unofficial attack dog. <laughs> wow. I've been called many things, but never the unofficial attack dog. I hope one of these bastards accidentally shoot one of their family members in the face. So they pulled up, like, literally the most extreme things I've ever said in my advocacy ever, um, out of anger, and, you know, what's the point? I don't say those things now. Here in Austin, Texas, Jess is known as the Hardcore Carnivore. So hardcore, you know, eating the abused bodies of tortured little innocent animals. So hardcore. I'm so proud of you. These are what we call plate ribs, so pretty much just ginormous dinosaur ribs. Bet Denim's mouth is watering. Not biased at all, you know, he's not like a flat out meat lover or anything. Try it. You should be able okay. to just get in there and rip the hunk off. That's how well cooked it is. Oh, look at his greasy little fingers. He just can't wait to tuck into a body of an abused animal. See, like, we had a very extensive, you know, long chat about animal cruelty, animal abuse, the environment, and he'd still happily, happily consume those animal products. So that says a lot about um, someone's character. I wouldn't expect you to. Look at that. Oh, that looks like a dead body. Hey, gentlemen, let me hold this for you. <laughs> Should we feel guilty about eating animals? No. I think there's a responsibility to make sure that the meat that we're eating is being harvested humanely. Harvested humanely. <laughs> hey, how do you humanely yeah. shoot a cow? <laughs> harvested humanely? Like, wow. Did she just pull out two euphemisms? Harvested humanely. 
How exactly do you harvest someone's life from them in a humane way? What type of knife do you use? Like a, a special humane harvesting knife? Ridiculous. I don't think that there's any guilt associated if we're responsible with our practices. Responsible, what do you mean? Be clear, what do you mean by responsible? Be specific, how do you responsibly shoot someone in the head? If you can get all the protein and sustenance we need from a vegan diet, wouldn't it be better that an animal doesn't have to suffer or die to sustain us? I think that would be great, except that we can't. <laughs> <laughs> here she goes. Do you have any science to prove that? I wonder if she has more credentials than the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. We've got 100,000 credentialed practitioners, registered dietitian, nutritionists, dietetic technicians, registered and other dietetics professionals, holding undergraduate and advanced degrees in nutrition and dietetics. They released a peer reviewed statement uh, saying vegan diets, well planned vegan diets can be healthy for all stages of life. <laughs> But no, no, this lady is uh, uh, more credible than the whole Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. The whole Academy, like, and and all that, and all that research. This this one individual carnivore who's got a clear bias, who's got a clear vested interest. Definitely take her word for it. Her her opinion over actual science, peer reviewed science. <laughs> you can't. So animal proteins are the only natural source of B twelve. Animal proteins are the only natural source of B12. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. B12 doesn't even come from animals originally. The, the source of B12 is uh, the soil and uh, water supply. It's a, it's a product of the bacteria. But welcome to the 21st century. Nobody is eating unwashed vegetables. No one is drinking out of streams. And due to modern sanitation, uh, the vitamin B12 has essentially dropped out of the plant eater's diet. So uh, I think it's absolutely essential that all plant eaters uh, consume a supplemental source of vitamin B12. So there's many ways to get B12. There's many B12 fortified foods. You can take a vegan supplement and vegans aren't the only ones being supplemented with B12. The cattle and animals in animal agriculture are also being supplemented with B12. Natural, right? The only natural source of B12. No fruits. No. No vegetables. No. Only meat. Meat only. Meat only. And I'm the healthiest guy in the world. I walk past the fruits and vegetables and then I'll make a beeline for the meat counter and talk to the butcher. Nice, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I've been looking for, some humane harvested, you know, humane meat, you know, high welfare humane harvested, you know, B12 nutrition meat. Actually, one more, yeah, that one's fine. With a one-way ticket to bowel cancer. So this is breakfast. This is breakfast. I usually eat about 12. Two steaks for breakfast, dude. This is heart disease waiting to happen. Despite the fact that we're told that red meat can increase our risk for cardiac disease or causes us to be obese or causes us to have diabetes or- Wait for it, here we go, expert opinion over here. <laughs> causes us to be inflamed. When you actually test that, none of that stuff happens. Oh really? So all of that research by all of those scientists telling us that red meat causes heart disease and you know contributes to bowel cancer, it's a, it's, this is a type 2A carcinogen, red meat. This was the World Health Organization. What, what is this guy talking about? Let's, let's just bring this up for a sec. Back in the 80s, researchers at Harvard started following these 120,000 people who were initially free of known heart disease and cancer at the beginning. A few decades later, though, and about 24,000 had died, including about 6,000 heart disease, 9,000 from cancer. Meanwhile, all along, every four years, the researchers were checking in and keeping track of everyone's diet. What did they find? Conclusion. Red meat consumption associated with an increased risk of total mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality, and cancer mortality, meaning a significantly shorter lifespan. Uh, no surprise, given the associated greater risk of dying from heart disease and cancer. And this was after controlling for age, weight, alcohol, exercise, smoking, family history, caloric intake, and even the intake of whole healthy plant foods such as whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. Uh, so it's not like the people eating more meat were dying prematurely because they were eating less vegetables. They seem to be dying prematurely because they were eating more meat. In fact, the opposite happened. And Sean is living proof, while his blood test shows slightly raised cholesterol levels. Slightly raised cholesterol levels? High risk? He's at 141, high risk? Wait a second, high risk for what? 
for heart disease. Serum cholesterol levels are the most determining factor as to whether or not you develop heart disease. Let's just have a look. The optimal cholesterol level, the optimal bad cholesterol LDL level is 50 to 70. While his blood test shows slightly raised cholesterol levels. Atherosclerosis is endemic in our population in part because the average person's LDL cholesterol is up around 130, approximately twice the normal physiologic level. Otherwise, he's in great shape. Otherwise, he's in great shape, except for a high, high, high cholesterol. You know, heart disease is the number one killer. One that actually surprised me, and that is his blood sugar levels. He had very high blood sugar levels. Uh, glucose, your fasting glucose, was at a 127, which is definitely, it can be on the higher side. Put him in the diabetic blood sugar range for fasting blood glucose. This guy's ability to deny things is amazing. Even the scans on his arteries, all clear. Where, what is that? What, 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 what is this? Is this from the doctor? What, what is it? What are we looking at here? That doesn't look like a document. That looks like it's docked it up on the computer. The kilos, this kettlebell, is 80 kilograms. This is a 200 kilo deadlift. So, so what what weight does this bear on the ethics, morality, and environmental destruction of eating animal products? Not at all. This guy's doing a carnivore diet. He's constantly in ketosis, and he lifts some weights. He's got a high cholesterol. You could be on a one-way ticket to a to a heart attack and still be fit. Like, what weight does this bear in an ethical debate about the morality of shooting animals in the head? 100% not vegan. Good, yeah, 100%, you know, supports the abuse of innocent animals. Our shoulder didn't evolve to throw things because we were throwing rocks at fruit. Yeah. We have a shoulder design for throwing here. This is going to be the best argument against veganism I've ever heard. I can already feel it. That's not what happened. You know, we were, we were clearly using it, implement technology to take down animals. And so all of our evolution has turned us into the ultimate apex predator. And then... <laughs> the ultimate apex predator. I walk past the fruits and vegetables, and then I'll make a beeline for the meat counter and talk to the butcher. Nice, that's what I've been looking for. Harry, isn't this just evolution? It doesn't make it moral if we've evolved to, to do something that's inherently cruel. We evolve raping and pillaging, killing each other too. Should we continue doing that? Animal products or victims? Victims. That's the first time they've showed a picture of the animals. Wow. Throughout this whole thing, that's the first time they showed a picture of the animals. So brazen, they never bothered to cover their faces. They boasted about it using their real names. Leah, absolute legend activist Leah along with Joanne and along with all the other Australian activists involved in this event. But despite this mountain of evidence, police are not laying any charges. You know why? The police probably aren't laying any charges. Maybe they should charge the dairy farmer with animal abuse. There was four dead dairy cows been shot in the skull. Like just laying there, like decomposing in the sun. You know what I mean? Like, they haven't even reported on that. That is biased reporting. That is shocking reporting. Why don't they show the animals at that farm? This is absolutely disgraceful stuff. We're proud of what we do. You're proud of what you do? You're proud of this? You're proud of this? How sick. How sick. You're proud? No, you're not. You're not, you're not proud of that. If you were so proud, you wouldn't be worried with all these activists on there with ca on your uh, dairy farm with, with cameras. You know, showing the abuse that happened there. And I can't believe Sunday Night didn't report on this. And we shouldn't have to cop this. Who copped what? What about this? Someone's gonna get hurt. Something terrible could happen. Oh, look at him. Something terrible could happen. Well, it already did, mate. It already did. You know, what happened to these animals? And I don't want that to happen. And I don't want that to happen. Well, it's already happened, dude. It's already happened. What did you do to those cows, dude? What did you do to those cows, mate? Well, what I've got to say about that whole piece is that that was the most biased ridiculous uh, story I've ever seen. Um, you know, it focused more on my criminal past, it focused more on vegans being extremists, more on the things those activists were saying than the actual abuse that's happening to animals. You know, uh, they painted this carnivore guy out to be the hero here. So they painted this dangerous way of eating, just eating red meat, out to be healthy, which is very irresponsible of them. Like, they literally showed a picture of animals once for about three seconds.
okay? They didn't show the victims at all, except for that one time. It was just, it was, it was pretty unbalanced. I'm going to say that. It was so unbalanced. And I bet you every single producer, um, director, you know, f even people on the camera, they were all meat eaters, all of them. Every single one of them. If they weren't meat eaters, it might have been like a vegetarian there or something like that. But this guy here, Denham, you know, eating massive chunks of meat, you know, this was just a completely biased bit of reporting by a bunch of people who eat animal bodies that were more involved with, you know, talking about the mean things that the, the activists said to those poor dairy farmers. They didn't show any of this, any of this that happened to those animals. There's a great quote by Mark Twain and it's like, it's easier to fool people than to convince people they've been fooled. And that's all I've got to say about that. And calling vegans extremists, I've already got this death threat, this death threat, and this death threat. Um, probably more. Uh, someone else is managing my page and just deleting so many ridiculous troll comments from people who've got no problem supporting cruelty and painting ladies like this like heroes. So what I'll do is I'll leave the link to their video down below. You can go check it out if you want. You can go leave your, your comments and criticisms and what you thought of the video. You can watch the whole thing through. It's just a really confusing piece, trying to paint meat out to be healthy, vegans out to be extremists. And that was it. That was, that was really all I got from that. Anyways, let us know what you thought down below. See you in the next video. Peace. The word, in, the word terrorism implies someone's being terrorised. And those activists are trying to stop animals from being literally butchered against their will. Okay, so who's the real terrorist here? Who's really being terrorised here?